All right, people, so welcome back to biology. Um, today we're going to get into uh, evolution of flight, how birds popped up and how they started flying, and what their connection is to dinosaurs. But before we jump into that, this is an awesome video. It is going to blow your mind. It's more about the biochemical, aka DNA, evidence for evolution. Um, so give that a check uh, and then come back here. Um, but yeah, it's a really fascinating video and feel free uh, when you watch these videos to like write questions down and when we have our Google Meet se sessions to come in and uh, kind of ask those questions about them. That's kind of what this is all about. But moving on, um, so kind of the path to birds here. So um, we do think dinosaurs are related to the modern day birds and that, you know, if you think about it, the birds you see flying around, you know, these are our dinosaurs. Like they never really kind of went extinct. They just kind of changed form because a lot of them died off, but probably not all of them, right? And then the mammals kind of took over the place of a lot of like these dinosaurs that may have gone extinct. Um, so if we kind of look at transition, you know, we believe we found fossils or we have found fossils of dinosaurs with feathers on them. They couldn't fly. So especially these ones see symmetrical feathers, but not flight feathers. Flight feathers are actually asymmetrical, uh, meaning one side has kind of more barbs than the other side. But Archaeopteryx, we're talking about in a second, had some flight feathers. Maybe not a great flyer, maybe more of a glider. Um, these ones, the lula, the thumb bone, and then here's our modern day birds. We think most birds, if you remember from that last video, may have started out as a kind of corvid, corvidae, the icterid day, or uh, just kind of a group of like crow-like birds. Um, and things like blue jays and stuff like that, very kind of bland bird, but we got... Uh, maybe all these different types of species originated from this kind of family right here. So how'd that happen? How'd we get there? What evidence do we have for this? That's the idea today. Um, before we go too far, though, I did want to highlight where mammals fit in, because uh, we said, all right, birds probably came from these dinosaurs, and dinosaurs came back from some kind of reptilian ancestor like this. Well, if you follow the path this way, here's these therapsids. These are the kind of in-between mammals... Uh, and reptiles, right? These had actually fur, where the scales have actually changed and evolved to be more fur-like, more hair-like, and then mammals may have pa uh, uh, have evolved from there. So we'll talk more about mammals and this kind of evolutionary path in our next unit, but I did want to kind of highlight it there that, oh, we both, mammals and birds, share this common ancestor way back in the day. And then just to kind of highlight some of the other things, right? Dinosaurs went this way. Well, crocodiles are actually way back earlier as well, so they're kind of their own separate group. Um, turtles as well, really old groups of uh, organisms. You know, the dinosaurs as we call them would have kind of fit back in this Triassic age over here. Um, so kind of interesting to think about. But we'll jump back into mammals a little bit later. All right, so our biggest piece of evidence uh, kind of connecting birds and dinosaurs is this the bird they found in Germany um, they found a whole lot more in um, China as well um, different species of birds but Archaeopteryx um, if you notice yeah what do you see right here in the fossil right kind of feel, see the indentations of feathers and obviously the bones and the neck right uh, so this kind of transition fossil that like Lucy um, had features of reptiles and birds, where like Lucy had kind of features of uh, apes and hominids. This would be kind of our Lucy of the birds, where right, we see things like the reptiles, only reptiles will have, but we see things that, okay, only birds really have. So she is this kind of missing link. So as far as reptile characteristics, and this is just kind of an artist interpretation, um, teeth. Birds don't have teeth, right? They actually die, um, like grind up their food. They have to like swallow um, like pebbles and uh, rocks um, in their gullet, and that will help grind up food. Um, whereas reptiles have the teeth. So this is a kind of bird-like creature with teeth. A bony tail. Birds don't have like the bony tail. They just have the feathers that come out. Um, fingers with claws. So see all the claws on here? Have you ever seen a bird with these kind of claws? It's kind of like dragon-like, right? Crazy. Um, but the bird-like characteristics it has was feathers, right? We don't really see any reptiles, modern-day reptiles with any feathers. And a furcula, which is a fun word. A furcula means the wishbone. So next time it's Thanksgiving dinner and you guys snap the wishbone, you can be the dork that says, oh, that's actually a furcula. And we watch Wishbone, PBS. Might be, might be too, too old for you guys. All right. 
So before we jump into this, I want you to kind of think to yourself, all right, what traits would an organism need to have before it could fly? So you are a terrestrial, you're a land-based organism, and what traits would you need to like get up off the ground and stay off the ground, right? So maybe you think, okay, maybe my body weight needs to be down. Um, obviously feathers seem like a good way to stay afloat, but you know, there's bats, they kind of have those, that stretchy membrane. Um, that's another way to, um, uh, fan out and kind of ride the, uh, air drafts. Um, and what would the transition forms look like? So like, what would it look like to have, you know, kind of some feathers, but not a full wing? Um, so you might, if we go back, might start think, all right, Something like this, what would be maybe the step before this and the step before that? Because we kind of already know what the step after is, right? What a fully formed wing would look like. And then if nature was selecting for these traits, how are those beneficial, right? Why would an organism have half a wing if it couldn't actually fly? They would have had to have some purpose, right? If, it, if that's what survive and let creatures reproduce more. Hmm... Another thing to think about is, okay, what use are feathers besides flying? Like, why would an organism have feathers? And a really cool study that just came out, um, well, not too long ago, is they basically they found the pigmentation feathers of these early organisms. So this isn't Archaeopteryx, this is Anchiornis, this is a different kind of bird-like species they found. Um, probably would have flown, like, not great, maybe more of a glider, uh, but they found the pigmentation in the feathers, so that might give you a clue, too. So they knew its hair pigment up here, this kind of crest, was reddish, and then black, and then the absence of pigment would be white, right? And then it had all this kind of gray pigment, maybe um, not as much melanin, not as much pigmentation, made it grayer and not as black. And this is the same eumelanin pigment that people with like dark hair would have, or like a crow's would have. And this is the same pigment, theomelanin, that people with red hair have. So isn't that kind of crazy to think about? Um, so what use are feathers besides flying? Uh, display. Look at me. Look how great I look. You know, maybe this would attract females if I have this cool red mohawk. Um, the other big thing would be for warmth, like just like our fur, our hairs for warmth. Uh, us mammals and birds are endothermic, meaning they're warm blooded. So to keep that heat trapped around our body, this is great for insulation. Uh, so that would be like a good benefit, a good thing that might get passed down through natural selection. Uh, but the big thing, you know, if it's good for mating, if it's good for warmth, what use is half a wing? Like, what use is this kind of leg wings or these uh, things if it couldn't actually fly that well or couldn't fly at all? So that's what we're going to try and figure out. So you're about to watch a video kind of explaining uh, their theories on it. Uh, again, the two main theories of flight right now are the running hypothesis and the gliding hypothesis. This one is that birds over time, even though they couldn't fly at first, basically got these wings and feathers. And as they ran, maybe to help them like jump up and catch uh, bugs flying in the air or to escape predators, this kind of running, jumping motion, eventually they started gliding and eventually they started flapping and then that's how flight evolved over time. Or that they climbed trees, kind of like the sugar glider, and would jump from tree to tree and glide to the next one to escape predators to help hunt. So these are the two main hypotheses, but you're gonna see a third one pop up in this video. Again, as you're watching this video, or maybe before you watch it, again, you gotta kinda think what environment would select for flight. Um, again, it's random mutations that cause adaptations, but it's the ones that survive and get passed on. That's how uh, basically any trait would evolve, any species would evolve over time, is when this beneficial mutation helps you survive long enough to reproduce and you start changing the frequency of genes in a population over time. So again, remember the difference between evolution and natural selection. What is nature selecting for? And then has it changed over time the frequency of genes? So having longer wings, having more feathers, having bright colorful feathers that attract mates, that kind of thing. So check out this video and then that'll be it for um, today.